Yeah. You awake? Did you sleep? Yeah. Like a log. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What are you going to do? Ah. The $64,000 question. You can't keep them locked up. Like animals. What else was I supposed to do? I don't know, but locking them up. I know. And I hate myself for it. It's against everything I stand for. We're gonna have to talk to them. Talk to them? About what? No, I don't know. Them, it. You know. Them, it. I can't even put it into words, can you? What they've been doing. Words can't describe it. A pair of us lying here all night, listening to each other, breathing. Too frightened to speak about them, about it. What have we created? We have to say something. Naughty boy, naughty girl, don't do it again. Ollie, please. Well, what then? What do we say to them? Our own son and daughter? I don't know. No. Because there's nothing we can say. Nothing anybody can say. We can't even look each other in the eye. So what are we supposed to say to them? Mum? Dad, I need the toilet. Mum? Please? Ollie? Leave him to me. Better open this one as well. Get dressed, please. Nat. Get dressed now. Now! Ollie, please. Well, don't just stand there and move. What is it? What are you doing? Have you seen this? Have we got any more like that? Let's get the family albums out, eh? Holidays, weddings, parties. smiling faces. That's our family. Our family, the Simpsons. And all those years. A lifetime's work. So proud, so smug, so self-satisfied. And we've got no reason to be. Because we're nothing. And we haven't got anything. <laughs> They're together. What? Upstairs, we've left them together. Ollie! Look, 
For goodness sake, Ollie, drinking isn't going to solve anything. Who said anything about drinking? Oh, would you believe it? I can't even do that right. That's better. Here. Go on. That's your best claret. No, it's worthless. Go on, take it. Nothing means anything anymore. Nothing. I mean, all these things so important. And now they're nothing. Nothing. It's all just window dressing. I know, I know. God, I feel. I don't know how I feel. Words can't describe it. It's, it's hopeless, isn't it? I mean, where do we go from here? What's the point? It's pathetic, isn't it? I mean, I'm pathetic. All of this, it, I thought it was so precious. I, I've been so pompous, a complete snob. And all because I've got a few bottles of overpriced plonk and a toy train set. It's pathetic. I don't understand. No, neither do I. I don't understand any of it. Me, this, us, those two in there, our handsome son and our beautiful daughter. God's sake, they've been having... I mean, they could be right now. Where is it? Where's what? what? This. Cold water. That'll sort them out. Look, we've got to try and hold this together. But that's just it, isn't it? There's nothing to hold together. And left. I'm going inside. Leave it. Sorry. I said, leave it! Mum, there are photos of a family. Family? We're not a family anymore. You and Nat have seen to that. God knows what we are, but we're certainly not a family. Mum. Oh, don't. You don't do that anymore. Mum. No. I can't touch you. Touching. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Touching in families. Cuddling, now that's right, that's good, but you, you have turned it into something else. Lust. Every time I look at you, I think of you and him together doing these things. Sex. It's not like that. Yes, it is. Family holidays. You and Nat camping together. That's what it was all about, wasn't it? Every time you volunteered to babysit for Daniel, that was why, wasn't it? So you and him could be together. No, we were just like any normal brother and sister. Normal? Oh, my God, have you heard this? I suppose I was the sister you never had. You were. You still are. No, you only ever had one thing on your mind. Was shopping trips. On the undies I helped you choose, giggling like schoolgirls, all the girly jokes, eh? The mystery boyfriend, and all the time it was my son, your own brother. It wasn't like that. Well, what was it like then? I mean, just look at you. Look at you. You're beautiful. You're stunning. You could have had any man you wanted. I've seen it. You, you walk into a room, of a bar, a restaurant, a pub, and every head in the place turns. You could have had anyone, anyone in the world. But you had to go for Nat. I didn't go for Nat. Why? Why Nat? There is no why. It just happened. Oh, it just happened, did it? Just like that? Yeah. Yeah, we just woke up one morning and suddenly decided to have an incestuous relationship just for a laugh. For God's sake, we didn't want it to happen. We couldn't help it. Yes, you could. We fell in love. Real love and not in the stomach. Butterflies here. You must have felt it when you met Dad. Nat is your brother. I didn't expect you to understand. You're too bloody.
bloody right I don't understand. But we love each other. Love? You don't know the meaning of the word, you stupid girl! any different. What? Now Mum and Dad know. Do you feel any different? About us? About everything? I've seen Mum and Dad upset like that. I mean, Dad doesn't know what to do, does he? How do you mean? I don't know. I just... I just always thought that if you found out, you know, about us, I hate you know what to do. What to say, be able to make things all right. I mean, he's our dad, isn't he? That's what dads are for. Make things better. Do you wish me and you had never happened? I don't know. I don't know what I think. But I never wanted to hurt Mum and Dad. I love them as much as you do. We couldn't have wished for better parents. We were so stupid, you know. We knew what happened if they found out. What it would do to them, we still carried on. And why? Because we thought we'd never get found out. No. Because we couldn't help it. And at the end of the day, it didn't matter if we got found out. What mattered was us being together. Well, that's wrong. Morally, it's wrong. What's so wrong? Everything. It's a mess. Do you feel ashamed? What? Ashamed. Dirty. Yeah. Oh, I used to get these really terrible pains of guilt. They used to just hit me, take my breath away. I mean, it's the enormity of it all. And that has happened, isn't it? I don't know what I felt. Yeah, all I can think about is Mum and Dad. It's not going to be the same again, is it? No. It can't be. Oh, God, George, what have we done? I just it must be feeling. I know. I know, but they've got to try and think how we're feeling. We love each other. It's not a crime, falling in love. That's just it. It is a crime. It's wrong. How can it be wrong? After all we've been through together, the pain, the fear, having to hide our true feelings from each other. How can a love that survives all that be wrong? We've sacrificed so much for each other. Our friends, even our marriages. I'd give up anything for you. Including Mum and Dad? Yeah. If I have to. Oh, God, George. Matt, I love you with all my heart. No. I know you do. I keep thinking back to when they were small children, four or five years old. Matt in his short pants, Georgia in her little white socks and her pigtails. Picture of innocence, eh? And then the next 15 years, it's all a blur. Suddenly they're grown ups. Those cute little kids, to what they are now. What went wrong? I don't know. Something must have gone wrong. How could we have missed it? I mean, there were never any problems, were there? They never got in trouble with the police or, or with drugs or anything. Something must have gone wrong. Was it us? Did we go wrong? Always blame the parents, eh? Well, it's up to us to instill a sense of right and wrong, give them some morals. Morals? Yeah. Treat them like adults and they'll behave like adults. Isn't that what you used to say? Very right on, very trendy. Sorry. 
Let them express themselves. Let them walk around the house with no clothes and have bath together. That was it, wasn't it? For God's sake. They were only kids seven and eight years old. Well, that didn't stop you teaching them the facts of life, did it? Feel free with themselves, at ease with their bodies. What is this? Are you trying to say that this is all my fault? Flashback, Ollie, 1968, a field full of hippies, a haze of dope, and let's smoke a couple of joints and drop some acid, and you know best. But your half-baked notions of freedom might work well in some hippie commune, but to inflict it on your own children. Have you hurt yourself? You're pathetic! But you've always had a problem with this, haven't you? The fact that I had partners before I met you. God, you're so bloody stiff. You always have been, from the day we met. Oh, comes as a surprise, does it? Well, let me tell you, when I first slept with you, it was like being with a piece of wood. Yeah, that's right. So uptight, so sexually repressed. We didn't have sex for six months after Danny was born. That's why you jumped on that kid at work, was it? Frightened you'd been missing out on something all these years. Get rid of some of that pent-up repression. A fine example to be set in your own children. Well, you look at yourself in the mirror before you start pointing your finger elsewhere. Well, I had no idea that you felt that way. I, I always thought that we had quite a good sex life. It must be an awful disappointment for you. I think I'd better go. Go where? Um, I don't know. Uh, anywhere at the hospital, see Daniel. Sorry. Don't go. Please. I, I need you here. I can't cope with this on my own. Do you think other people know? Sorry? They were brother and sister. What do you mean? When we're together, do we look any different from those two? Of course not. We're not some sort of freaks, you know. What well, other people do think we are? Since when have we worried about what other people might think? Can I hold your hand? No, well, someone might see us. So what? See? Just like any normal couple. What about Danny? What if he knows? Well, he can't, surely. Oh, his big brother and sister. I hope they're proud of themselves. Well, he worships the ground they walk on. In God's name, why? I mean, if, if they were in some religious cult or something, anything, then maybe I could start to understand. Why? Well, only two people can answer that. Yeah. Right. We sit them down, start at the beginning. We need to get some answers. Stay calm, just talk. You're back. Yeah. We, uh, we need to talk. Talk? Yeah, just talk. No screaming, no shouting. Sit down. Please. Right. Um, where to start? Thousand and one things, isn't it? When did it begin? You two. The truth. Please. I was 14, George was 15. God. Some holidays, wasn't it? Yeah. So, 1988, Summer Grandad died. Yeah. 1988. So, you we moved to Liverpool. Do you remember how I was bullied at my new school? You know, all the lads taking the mickey out of my accent. Bullying was terrible. I got it as well, the name calling. Old enough to stand up on our own two feet. That's what you said, wasn't it? You said it was the summer holidays. Yeah. 
I was at the cottage. I took the kids to the cottage. You were working. It was the first summer at the cottage after Granddad died. Remember how much we all missed him. I quiet myself to sleep every night. Me and George were in the twin room. You were next door with Dan. Me and Nat cried and cried. We got into bed together just to comfort each other. I was there to comfort you. I'm your mother. Mom, you were busy with Danny, and Dad was working all the time. There was no one else for us to turn to. Oh, please. You'll have me in buckets in a minute. Well, do you want to know what happened or not? So, um, while I was in one room with Daniel, you two were next door. We wanted to stop, believe me. We knew how much you'd be hurt if you ever found out. Oh, so you did give us a second thought in all these years. Of course we did. We never wanted you to suffer. We love you. Well, why carry on with it? Why? Because we can't help ourselves. That's why. You know, we tried to stop it. We tried everything. Yeah. Well, you haven't tried hard enough. You don't know what it's like. You two have got a great marriage. Marrying someone you don't love. Someone you've never loved. Sleeping with the first person you meet at college. One night stands, one after the other. Drinking too much, doing drugs, getting off your head all the time. And why? I'll tell you why. Because the one person you want to be with, the one person you really love, you can't have. Well, not anymore. No, you can't. It ends now. Right now. I'm sorry, Dad. It doesn't work like that. It's finished. It's got to be. No. We're staying together. And nothing is going to split us up. There's a special Channel 4 leaflet which explains where you can find help if your family is affected by incest. For a free copy, send a large stamped addressed envelope to Brookside, The Simpsons Story, P.O. Box 4000, London W5, 2GH. I'm sure there must be some mistake, because I was given time off in order to sort out some personal problems at home. Oh, I see. My references. OK. Thanks. Dad, is this... Mum? <sighs> Only to be expected, I suppose. Well, what is it? What's happened? You're happy now. Now you've seen me totally humiliated. Isn't that what you wanted? Mum, what is it? My new job, I've lost it. Oh, no, not because you took time off, because of... Because of you and Georgia. No. Nivens refused to give me a reference. My new bosses must have made inquiries because I didn't turn in. They found out about my dismissal. So, now they know what I am, a sexual deviant. Still, at least we know where you two get it from. What are you doing with that? Taking them down the bottle bank. Got to recycle them. Oh, saving the planet. Nice one. Yeah, give us a bit of extra room around here and all. Oh, isn't that lovely, eh? You thinking of that? Thinking of what? Well, making extra space. Thinking ahead for when we have the baby. You what? 
There he is, just a twinkle in my eye, and you're already making plans. Yeah, and it'll stay a twinkle, and all till we have a proper chance to talk about this. Uh, maybe later, eh? I've got a shop to work. Bev! Ron, I can't stand here talking all day. I lose money, and if we're going to have another mouse to feed... Hey, now, just listen to listen, me. Listen, why here? We stick another load in the machine, run the hoover around, and we give the toilet bowl a good scrub. Yeah, eh? yeah, but... And while you're there, we clean out the bathroom cabinet. It's full of junk, most of it Dee Dee's, and she wrinkled cream and stuff. Bev, listen. What have they taken? They've only taken David's radio here. The oh. radio, the amp, the headset. Oh, poor David. Poor us. Now, with his radio out of commission, he's going to be stuck in the houses all day, isn't he? Oh. Under our feet. <sighs> or worse still, there'll be a restaurant organising cheap lunches for the over 55. <laughs> You're right, poor us. Well, at least they didn't get into the house. Could have been a lot worse, you know. Well, it needn't have happened at all if we still had the security camera up. It's a deterrent, isn't it? Morning, campers. Ah, the very man. What very man? We've had our garden shed broken into. So what's that got to do with me? Well, we were merely saying that if we still had the security camera, this probably wouldn't have happened. And as it was you who insisted that we took it down. Oh, I see. Well, I'm all for being security-minded, but once it starts intruding into other people's privacy, if you know what I mean, Maxie. Indeed. Anyway, as you're supposed to be chairman of the Residents' Association, we just thought we'd let you know. Did they take anything? Yes, David's radio gear. Yes. And you didn't see anyone or hear anything? No, but if we'd had the camera. All right, all right, point taken. Right, well, I better get on. Thousand and one things, you know. See you later. <sighs> You better get on to the police. No, I think you'd better phone the police. I've got an appointment with a solicitor, remember? Oh, of course. I'd rather you than me. <laughs> Sorry? Divorce settlements. You know how messy they can be. Well, I think Patricia and I have passed all that. I don't think we've got the energy left to fight after what's happened the last few weeks. No, it's all going to be perfectly civilised. We'll only talk to our solicitors. See you later. Mm, bye. Don't let your guard drop. <laughs> mm? Hi, love. Hi, how are you? Oh, I've got a dipstick for a husband and an even bigger dipstick for a son, but apart from that, <laughs> life's a bowl of cherry. Do you enjoy your breaking farms? Well, it wasn't quite what I expected, you know. Well, well that's the way it goes, isn't it? How are you, anyway? Oh, fine. I mean, I could have done without the shed being broken into. You what? Mmm. Someone got in last night, took most of David's radio stuff. Well, well that's nice. Mmm. Whoever they were, they must have been pretty desperate. I mean, all that. Stuff. You'd be lucky to get twenty pounds for it. Excuse me, love. Um, I think I've left the cooker on. Oh, of course. Mm. Nice talking to you. Hey, soft lad. What are you doing? You're taking the mic or something? Sorry. The washing. Look at the state of it. Oh, what's wrong with it? It's all bunched up. It'll never dry like that. You better get it sorted out before your mother gets back, because she'll go mad. I'm telling you. Hey, what do you think you're playing at? You are. Love, take it easy, will ya? I know he's creased your blouse. I'm not talking about the washing your prize pill. Like I'm talking about this thieving little get robbing from the neighbours. Ah, I never do anything, Mum. Excuse me, that's just written all over your face. Hang on, what neighbours? The Farnhams. They had the shed broken into last night while Boo Jess here happened to be staying with a mate. No, I never. Oh, and is that a flying pig up there, is it? Jackie, listen, if the lad said he didn't do it, come on, give him a break, will ya? Give him a break? Don't tempt me. I never did anything, Dad, honest. All right, son, I believe you. Is that a brain you've got up there? Have you forgotten about them ciggies or what? Listen, if you can rob off your own, you can rob off anyone. He did it all Listen, right. Listen, I have been there, haven't I? I know what it's like. Fingers pointing as soon as anything goes wrong. Now they're having a go at Jay, aren't they, eh? Getting at me through him. Do you know he's got you wrapped round his little finger? Oh. By you, you're on the rock again, I'm telling you. If I get so much as a sniff of it. It's like, um, you know when you've been winded? When you've had all the stuffing knocked out of you? Yeah, I know. I can't find anything to hang on to. There's no hope. Can you see any hope? Not anyone like a tea or a coffee? No. 
I would not like a tea or a coffee. What I'd like is for you and your sister to sort this mess out and stop this nonsense. Just stop it. Stop it now. What? No, I stop it. I said stop it. What are you stop doing? It. It's okay. You're okay. Stop it. Why won't you stop it now? I can't. I can't change the past or how we feel about each other. Look at what you're doing to us. You're tearing this family apart. I'm sorry. Sorry? You're not sorry. You don't give a damn. All you care about is one thing, isn't it? Sex. That's what this is all about, isn't it? Well, come on. Tell me all about it, eh? All the lads together. God, you're sick. Oh, sick. Oh, do you hear that, Bell? I'm sick. That's the problem. It's you and me. It must be. All right, I'm the one who's sick. Is that what you want to hear? I'm sick. Satisfied? There's someone here to see me. I, uh, I just thought I'd pop by. <sighs> Beverly. So, it's gonna be a white wedding then. Don't sound so surprised, Bev. Me and Val are as pure as the driven snow. Which means B isn't. What do you mean? As pure as the driven snow. Is that why you dumped her? I didn't dump anybody. I just had a choice to make that all. Mm, isn't the castle over? Oh, I love white weddings, me. Only problem is I always end up in tears. Well, my girl's gonna get everything she wants. Big white rolls rush to the church. Big two afterwards, champagne. The works. Oh, and you're a big softy. Well, I have me moments, you know. All right, Ron. All right. Oh, I'll get some more water for me whitewash. Right, young lady, I want a word with you. Why? What have I done? Look what I found while I was cleaning out the bathroom cabinet. Me pill? Yes, your pill. And look, Bev, the last couple of days is still in the packet. Oh, I must have forgot to mention to you. I've come off it. You've come off it? When? Three days ago. Th three days ago? But aren't you meant to take it every day? I know, great, isn't it? I knew you'd be pleased. We, but... You know, two nights ago. Oh, well, yeah. Did the earth move you and all? No, it bloody well didn't. For God's sake, Bev, what happens if you're pregnant? Ron, that is the idea. I've told you I want another baby. Our baby. And I told you we needed to talk about it. Well, you never know. Might be too late for talking now, Mr. Virility. Excuse me, customer. Good news about Danny, isn't it? She'll be home soon. Yeah. So does that mean you'll be coming back to the flat? Um, well, now Danny's going to be OK. That's the reason you've been here for the past few weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Rallying round like that. Your mum and dad must be made up with you. Shall I, um, make a cup of coffee or something? Do you fancy one, that? Georgia? No. So, any juicy gossip or anything? Right. I'm only going to be an hour or so. Just going to run a few errands for your mother. Yeah, cool. Take your time. Right, it's OK. Listen, Jimmy, uh, now, don't take this the wrong way, but... That stuff at the farms. Oh. Did you, Nicky? Not you and all. Look, what is it with people around here? But maybe you'd best forget that. All right, all right. Calm down, Leo. Look, if you say you didn't do it, I believe you. Okay, and I mean it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a bit of deal. Hey, listen. If you want to get back in your mother's good books, bring that washing in when it's dry, will you? Yeah, no problem. All right. See you later. Yeah. Take it easy. Well, you're only talking to the new parent governor. Oh, yeah, I know, I heard. Congratulations, eh? <laughs> Cheers. So what about you? Oh, not as important as you, I'm afraid. I'm just dropping my daughter's geography project off. She left it on the kitchen table this morning. Oh, right. <laughs> not that there's much point. Morning. What is it? 
Well, the teacher's been off for three weeks now. Stress. They've just been bumped in with another class. See, this is what I'm talking about. Lack of resources. Our kids are losing out on you. Yeah, yeah, you're preaching to the converted, you know. I know, I know. It's just so frustrating. There's so much that I want to do. Well, that's why I'm up here now. I'm going to see this thought about all this bullying that's been going on. Oh, well, if you've got an appointment, I better not keep you. Oh, you're all right. He's not expecting me. I just thought I'd drop by on the notes. <laughs> You've been lucky. You have. You need an appointment to see Thornton. His diary's fuller than the Queen's. You forget one thing. I'm a parent governor. He's got to see me. Yeah, well, don't hold your breath, eh? See you later. See you later. Jimmy? Jimmy, is that you? Second pair I've ladded today. It's going to cost me a fortune. Hey, if you want to buy in bulk, I'll do you a discount. Thanks. You're going to have to make these last. Listen to that Sinbad one, eh? Happy as a lark. Thank you, Karen, please. All right for some. Oh, I've put my size 10 in it again, haven't I? Ah, you're all right. Some you lose, some you lose, eh? Had to know fish in the sea. Well, yeah, we would have been a bit of a catch. And I reckon he's got a few bob in the bank. What makes you say that? Haven't you heard the big plans for him and Val? White wedding, Rolls Royce, champagne. He's really pushing the boat out. Oh, is he now? A white wedding. We'll see about that. You forgot me, Chet. All right, sir. Listen, then. Hiya. Well, don't mind me, pussy cow. Look, Fee. There's no need. I just want to wish you all the best. Well, it's how very much. I know hard feelings, eh? Oh, is that lovely? Well, no hard feelings. Oh, yeah, there's just one more thing before I go. Oh, no, Fee, don't. Don't, Fee. Have a nice white wedding. Looking a bit pasty there, Kev. I keep seeing the ghost. Very full. Jimmy? Hey, Jackie, come and have a look at this. Come here now. You missed that there. What's up? Well, where do you think, eh? I found it in the extension. I thought he was dead, Jimmy. It was next to him where our Kylie could have found it or anything. He's still there now, doped up to the eyeballs. Right. Give it to me, I'll sort him. Are you sure you don't want to come out for a drink with me? No, thanks. George? No, I'm not really in the mood. As if I couldn't tell. I'm not stupid, you know. The atmosphere in this place is like... Well, it's like someone's died or something. It's just dying that, you know, things were a bit tense. Yeah, Mum and Dad had a bit of a fallout. Oh, family squabble. Well, I better leave you to it then. When am I going to see you? I don't know. Well, give us a ring then. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See you. Poor Charles. Poor us. We've got to get out of here now. I can't go on much longer like this. I'm going to go crazy. See you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Jim. Jay. Come on, mm. Sonny. Mm. Dad. Mm. He's hooked, is he? You what? He's hooked. Like a proper junkie. Sticking needles in his arm. Yeah. A proper junkie. Oh, God. Come on, son. Yeah. Come on. Let's get you into bed. Come on, man. Bed? <clears throat> no, Jimmy. I want him out of this house. You what? He's not going anywhere the state he's in. He's off his head. Well, just till he comes round then. 
Oh, that's going to change. Look, I'm here to get results, and I'm not going to be fobbed off by some secretary. I'm going to keep banging on his door until he owns it and listens to me. Our kids' lives are being made a misery by the same few bullies day in and day out, and I'm going to do something about it. Me too. You were right. Damn it, you were right. I did warn you. You know, I should have gone in there with all guns blazing. Attack, the best form of defence. Put her on the back foot. But she's got me by the... And she's going to squeeze as tight as she can. Bring water to your eyes. God, how could I be so naive? So trusting. Do you know, her demands are absolutely outrageous. I'll be lucky if I see Thomas and Alice more than once a year. And the money, I mean, she just wants to bleed me dry. Not to mention the solicitor's costs. She's really put the knife in, hasn't she? <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, Susanna. She is mad if she thinks I'm going to sign anything. She wants to take my children away from me. She wants to take me for every penny I've got. Well, I'm not going to let this happen. I am going to fight this tooth and nail. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I can't believe it. I mean, being married to a junkie's bad enough, but finally getting on some of the needle in his arm. That's some sort of a nightmare, then. Every time I think I've left it all behind, along comes to Miguel just to slap me right back down again. As if I had mad enough with our Lindsay and me. I, 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 I. Green bottles in here, love. Sorry. Miles away. You've had some luck, haven't you, Jack? <laughs> you haven't exactly been blessed with good fortune, have you? No. No, I suppose not. Hey, look at us, eh? Like a couple of old age pensioners down the bottle bank having a good moan. <laughs> if we're not careful, we'll be going to afternoon sessions of being no at this race. Thanks, anyway. What for? Being a good listener. What a mate's fall of. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Listen, do you uh, fancy a cuppa? Don't you have to be getting back? No, no, I'm a man of leisure these days, aren't I? Oh, well, bed man. My mum. You spending your afternoons with another woman? Don't be daft. She knows we're just mates, aren't we? Well, you're going to buy me that cup of tea then, I want. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, I'll even splash out on a bar of chocolate as long as we share it. <laughs> Sit down, I've got something to say to you. Sit down. Look, um, before you start, there's something that we need to say to you. Go on, all ears. Me and George have made the decision. Oh, we think it's best for everyone. Go on. Me and Matt. We're leaving this afternoon. Sorry, what did you say? I said we're leaving. This afternoon. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. You're not going anywhere. What? You think I'm going to let you two walk off together into the sunset? It's for the best. No, it's not going to happen. You can't stop us. I can phone the police. They'll stop you when I tell them what you've done. You wouldn't dare. Just try us. You can't keep us locked up here forever. What are you going to do with us? We're going to split you up. You what? You can't. We can and we will. Because it's the only way we can put a stop to this madness. First thing tomorrow, one of you packs your bags and leaves. The other one stays. We're going to keep you apart for as long as it takes. Your mum found you, you know. She found this next to you. I thought you were trying to kick it, Jimmy. Oh, you done it a couple of times. Oh. How long have you been doing smack? A couple of 
please. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I've tried to kick it. you know. You know I have. Once the shivers down, I need this electric blanket to keep me warm. Don't throw me out, Dad. No, I know I'm a smackhead and I'm a thief. But I need you, my mum. I'm not gonna cry it out. You promise? But take care of me. <laughs> I promise you. You're gonna be all right. Your dad's gonna look after you now. Next year on four, Caroline in the city. Five minutes. Oh, made this for you special with your energy. Thanks for that. Best news. Oh, come here. Yeah. It's been ages since we've had a cuddle. Mm. Mm. Oh, I love it. <laughs> hey, how'd you fancy a trip to Bevland? Mm. Hang on. What about Josh? Oh, he's fast asleep. Bev, Bev, you have been taking your pill, haven't you, love? Hey, don't worry about that now. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you wouldn't try and trick me, would you? Trick you? You know, into getting you pregnant like that. Oh, Ron, you know I've always wanted a big family. Something Bev, like the Waltons. Bev, is it that important? Well, as it happens, yeah, it is. I mean, what happens if you were to pop your clogs tomorrow, eh? I'd have nothing to remember you by. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Optimism. Anyway, you'd have Josh. I'm not being funny, but I wouldn't, would I? I mean, he's not really yours, is he? <sighs> oh, Bev, come on, love. You know I love you. I want to enjoy my retirement with you and our Josh, but you can't see this expect me to father any more kids. Yeah, well, if you're not willing, I'll have to look elsewhere. Oh, yeah. What, like? Get Father Christmas to drop one down the chimney, like? I can go to Sperm Bank or IVF, eh? My kid might have a brain surgeon for a father. Yeah, or a wine, old Bev. I love you. It's not enough. No, it's not. I want a baby, Ron. I want your baby. <sighs> Give me strength. Yeah, and your breakfast has gone cold and all. I know Patricia's worried about the cancer return, but look at this. She wants valuations of the house, the restaurant, everything. <laughs> I mean, she won't tell me how ill she is, and yet she gets a lawyer to send something like this. Why on earth won't she tell me, Susanna? If she does want her share, what's she going to do? Well, what can I do? I have to sell up to pay her. Surely she can't want to wreck everything I've worked for. She's well within her rights. And what about my rights? <laughs> the right to know whether she's going to live or die. My right as a father. Well, she can whistle for it, signing absolutely nothing. <sighs> Look, Mum, I know you must be feeling that I've let you down, you know. But I'm going to try and get myself sorted, you know, if you help me. I can. I, I, know, I know I can. See, love. Willpower. And with the right help. I wish I could be as optimistic as you, Jimmy, but I can't. I haven't got the energy anymore. I'm sorry, son. I'm going to work. See you, Mum. You better mean this, Jimmy. I do, Dad. I'm gonna kick it. Right. Well, we get you some breakfast. Then you're coming down to the drop-in centre with me. I'm gonna get you an interview. 
Let's see how serious you really are. Dad, can we please just talk about this? It's all been said. What are you doing? Look, let's go back inside. This isn't like you. You're overreacting. Overreacting? I haven't started yet. Morning. Uh, morning, Max. Get in the car, George. I don't want a scene on the close. The last thing we want is all the neighbors knowing our business. This is stupid. Leave it, Matt. It makes them happy. I think that's it, then. We know. Yeah. I am judging by the look on Ollie's face. The cat is well and truly out of the bag. Oh, imagine finding out your son and daughter were... Oof, that's a bad thinking about. What about poor Belle? wonder how she's coping. And what about poor Danny? He'll be out of hospital soon. Susanna, look. It's Nat and Georgia. They're just as much to blame for Danny ending up in hospital. I am positive that he saw them together. That's why I ran out into the road. Now, I'm the victim of an anti-speeding campaign, and for what? To protect the Simpsons. Mum, there's no eggs, shall I? Forget uh... the eggs, Nat. I need you to tell me wh why this happened, how you and Georgia ended up this way. What's the point in talking about it now? She's gone. There's no need. I need to be able to understand this, or, or try to understand it. I have to be able to cope with this. It wasn't planned or anything. Well, was it something I did, or your father? No, it wasn't like that. Then what was it? Tell me now. Help me understand. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't anyone's fault. It, it just happened. Every time I think of you two together, I just go cold. I look at the two of you, and I just don't know who you are anymore. It can't have just happened. Or was it her? Was it Georgia who started this? No, it wasn't like that. Well, she's older. Was it her fault? Is that why you're so shy, because of her? Why does it have to be me that's been led astray? I've got my own feelings. I didn't choose to be with her. She didn't choose to be with me. It just... it just sort of happened naturally. Naturally? It's perverted! Oh, come on, Mum. Don't be such a hypocrite. We all do things we can't control. What about when you went with that guy at work? He was younger than me. Is that perverted? That was different. That was a mistake. All right, was it a mistake when you're with him in some hotel room? Or in the storeroom? Is that what happened in some dingy basement? Is that where you cheated on Dad? No. You say you're worried about Dan. Well, what about your secrets? You're going to protect him from them, are you? You know, you want to take a good, long look at yourself before you start telling the rest of us what's right and wrong! <laughs> Listen, Andy, I've been on to the council twice already. Who else should I speak to? What's the number? Try Chris Hart. Chris? Chris Hart. Double seven five. Yeah. Two six. Great, okay. We'll give him a plus see how it goes. All right, cheers, mate. Well, how'd you get on, son? Oh, I did all right, Dad. I thought they were going to give me a night time, but the room was sound. She sort of asked me what drugs I was using, how long I've been using. Yeah, that sort of stuff. I told you not to be bullying, didn't I, eh? Hello. Look, they're not interested in telling you that. They just want to get you straight. So. What's the plan? Well, they reckon I've got to go on this methadone. They don't think my system can handle a straight cold turkey. But I've got to register myself with a GP first. Unless I think I'll find one who'll take on an addict. Yeah, well, listen, don't be worrying about that. I'll sort it out. Who's the suit? Oh, head social worker. I've got to sort this girl and her daughter with some decent accommodation while she's on rehab, you know. Uh, well, you reckon I could come down here, you know, for some uh, counselling and that? Good. Well, you make sure you stick to it, do you hear? There's... You see that fella over there? Yeah. That's Steve. He nearly lost his legs because he'd been injecting them that much. Do you want that to happen to you? No, of course I don't know. Right. Well, sounds as if you're on your way, son. I am, Dad. I am. I'm going to do this, you know. Nice one, kid. Listen, they want to figure out if I'm going to can a limo. Do you want one? No, you're all right. I'm going to get on the blower, sort you out with the doctor. Right, nice one.
See you later, then. Yeah. Fee? Hang on a mo. I don't waste my time speaking to low life. Just listen to me, will ya? What kind of a doctor won't take on a patient, eh? He's just a kid. Oh, for crying out loud, what would it take? Or would you treat him in... Oh, my God, Jimmy. Oh, forget it, Doc. Jimmy, what's going on over there? Trust me, Dad, you don't want to know. Hey, never mind, trust you. Who are they? What's going on? Well, well look, after we got out of France and that, I didn't think they'd find me. Are you telling me they've got something to do with that gang in France? I paid them off, didn't I? Don't they know that? I owed them a lot more than 1,200 quid, Dad, all right? Uh, how much more? Another two grand. Oh. Jimmy! I know, I know, I know. And if I don't pay them, Dad, they'll kill me. They'll make sure that debt's repaid one way or another. <laughs> Hang on. This is Liverpool, son, not Marseille. I've still got my contacts here. I'll get them called off. It's no use. It's just no use. They're the big time, aren't they? They found me here. Yeah. And I've seen what they do to people who don't pay up. Is it a slow? Yeah. I think so. It should hold out till we get to the cottage. Let's go. No, Dad. I want you to tell me why you're doing this. For Dan. Because you know neither of us would harm Dan. Why? Because it's the only way I know how to deal with it. I don't know how to feel anymore. This whole thing is just totally... You can't expect me to let you stay in the house together. All those years, I, I didn't know. You weren't supposed to know, ever. We tried to stop it. We tried to keep it a secret. Yes. Those weddings, those lies. How could you play with Martin's feelings like that? And Jules, your mother and me. All that love. You just threw it back in our faces. Can you please just try and listen and let me explain? Just for a minute. Right. It's about Sinbad. And who's that then? <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was engaged to the two of us at the same time. If I had, then I would have. What? Called her off? Look, if you never told me, I suppose he wouldn't have told you either. I hope you'll both be very happy now, if you don't mind. No, actually, Val, I do mind. To tell you the truth, I'm dead jealous. He promised me the world only to go and break me heart. I hope he has a long and miserable life for what he did to me. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's nothing you can say. Ah, oh, don't worry about me, love. I'm a survivor. It's in me blood. I'm gonna make a fresh start. Move out of that dive of a flat up there and into a place without pizza. Val, you forgot your handbag. Oh. Just sticking to the one woman, are you now, philanderer? Look, Fee, can we just bury the hatchet? Yeah, I'd like to. In your fat head! I just wants to be friends. <laughs> you are joking! You dump me! You're nothing but a two time and lying guess. I want nothing to do with you. Aren't well, you glad you're marrying me instead of her? Yeah, of course I am. So, when you touched that. When you were... Did you ever feel that what you were doing was wrong? Of course I did, Dad. I'd look at you and Mum and feel like I was... I don't know. I knew what we were doing was wrong. But sometimes it just felt so right. 
sometimes when your mum would go to kiss me or hug me. I want to tell you not to touch me. I felt dirty. Remember how mum used to nag me about spending hours and hours in the bath? I wanted to clean that off me. He never forced himself on me. I just thought that maybe if I washed him off, perhaps I'd never touch him again. But I did though, didn't I? But it's wrong, Georgia. I know. We both know that. After it had happened a few times, I thought that, that we could just stop, that that'd be the end of it. We'd forget about it. Then it just kept happening. In spite of feeling guilty, it has been going on for years. Maybe the secrecy was half the attraction. But then you look behind you and there's this great big shadow stretching out. A big dark shadow from your past. And you feel so guilty. Mates at uni used to go on about their boyfriends. And I used to feel really jealous. I wanted to talk about the love of my life. How he held my hand as he'd whisper in my ear. Please. I can't listen to this. I couldn't, could I? They'd say what I do with Nat is wrong, it's disgusting, it's immoral, illegal. But it is, Georgia. I know. But somehow those words, you know, say them over and over again in my head, but they don't mean anything. I hate this. I hate what we're doing to you and Mum. But I just can't help myself. I can't change the way I feel about that. Dad, I'm sorry. We didn't do this intentionally to hurt you or Mum. And we want to put it right, but we just can't. Take me to the other side of the world. You could stop us from ever seeing each other again. But I'll never stop loving him, Dad. Ever. I'm telling you, love, he did very well down there today. I'm glad for him. I was just thinking about him when he was a kid. A spit of his dad. I do all the same big ideas and I'm all just like you. Thought you had it all worked out, didn't you? Yeah. What breaks me hard, though, Jim, is I still see him as my little boy. <laughs> Only with a druggy needle stuck in his arm. Yeah, but love, we're looking after him now, aren't we, eh? And listen, it took a bit of persuasion, but I've sorted him with a doctor. Oh, that's great. Yeah, look, the idea will be we'll pick up his script every day, right? And I'll be watching him like a hawk. Make sure he doesn't give in to temptation to shoot up again. Methadone. Listen, Jimmy, I want to help him. I mean, of course I do. It's me so on his knee, but... When I saw him with that needle in his arm... But that's all in the past now, love. I'm not going to give up on him. If we stick together, we can help him. And what about me? You know what it did to me when you were on drugs. I know me son and all. I don't know if I can do it, Jim. But he needs a life, Jackie. Yes. And so do I. Do you need a hand with anything? You've done quite enough for me already. Oh, come off it, Fee. Well, there's no point in us fighting, is there? Were you working next door? I mean, we're going to be bumping into each other all the time, and, you know, you're not making it any easier. Oh, why should I? You did the dirty, not me. You played away from home and scored an own goal. Oh, but, Fee, I mean, I went months without anyone showing a blind bit of notice to me, and then I couldn't believe me luck when you and Val came along. I mean, the, the problem started when I fell for the two of you. So come I got the biggie. Because I just didn't know which one of you to go for. I mean... <laughs> I was so mixed up at one stage, I ended up tossing the coin. You what? You're a poor excuse for a man, do you know that? I just feel sorry for Val. What kind of a basis for a marriage is that, eh? 
Oh, wait, have you got a coin on you? I tell you what, heads it'll last and tails it won't. Ooh, well, you just might be lucky, but I doubt it. You better start saving your pennies, love, for the divorce lawyers. You're back early? Yeah, I, um... What are you doing here? Get out! Ma both of you, get Ma out! No, Bell, she Put can stay! Put that aside to them in the same house Georgia, together! Georgia, go upstairs and unpack and that's take Why a walk. Why don't you just buy them a house and give them the key and let them play happy families? Or where are they gonna go, hmm? Where can they go where we will be sure they're not going to be together? Oh, this is Nowhere. Utterly Keeping them apart painful. was just a knee-jerk reaction. We've got to get this sorted properly. Utterly useless! What'd she do? She's always been able to twist you around her little finger. She'd turn on the tears, spout about our inadequacies. Well, they're the ones who are inadequate. They're the ones who are to blame. Well, just stop and listen to me. Don't walk away from this. I can't ban her from her own home. I love her. We both love yes, her. Yes, I know that. That's the reason that we're doing this, and for Daniel. But what about Nat and Georgia? They need us now more than ever. You can't run away from I this. I am not running away! Yes, you are. You always do in a crisis. Oh. Listen, Belle, if we're going to keep this family intact, then we've got to help each other. We've got to face up to it. We, getting angry and emotional, that's not going to help anybody. Come inside, Ron. It's getting cold. So I still won't settle. Why don't you read him a bedtime story? I'm busy with the car, Bev. Oh, he loves it when you read to him. Yeah. Well, you're suddenly Mrs. Mother, eh? You read to him. Give me some peace for a change. After all, you never stop reminding me that he's not really mine. That's a spiteful thing to say. Yeah, well, you're the expert at that, aren't you? Hi, Ron. How are you, Jack? Problems with the car? <laughs> nah, Bev, she's driving me up the wall. Families, eh? You and all. Got more grief. I wouldn't know where to start. Every time I think we've got rid of drugs from our lives, it's... No, oh, I don't know, it's... It's like a curse. Hey, come on. You're not cursed, love. I'm not so sure. Jimmy's desperate to help him, you know, and I can't. You saw the way it was when Jimmy was coming off drugs. I mean, it nearly killed me, Ron. I wonder what you've done to deserve all this, eh? Maybe I do deserve it. Maybe I'm being paid back for all the wrongs I helped him cover up when he was on drugs. All the things I let him get away with. Jackie, you can't start thinking like that, love. The truth is, he doesn't deserve you. Honest, you just want to wish it all away, you know? I just want to wake up one morning and not hear the word drugs. To worry about my family cheating and stealing from me. But I'll wake up tomorrow and it'll still be there. Then get yourself out of there then. It's not that easy, is it? I love them both, that's the problem. Yeah, I love them both. Even when they're doing this to me. Jackie, that's crazy, love. You've got to start thinking about yourself. And do what? Jimmy would be lost without me, Ron. I couldn't do it to him. I love him. I mean, you couldn't imagine leaving your bed, could you? Jimmy says I've got no compassion, you know. And he's right. I can't even bring myself to look at my own son for fear of the trouble he might cause me. Is that selfish? No, love. It's not selfish at all. Listen, Jack, you've given that family more than their fair share of chances. It's time to look after yourself, love. Those two are gonna drag you down, can't you see that? You've gotta get out now for your own sake. Where would I go at my age, eh? No one has asked me. I'll have to be getting in. Hey, Jackie. There's always someone out there for you, love. Never forget that.
The stories continue in Brookside tomorrow on 4 at 8 o'clock. Starting next tonight over on ITV, Soldier Soldier. I'm changing the beds today, so can you get your sheets ready? Yeah, no problem. And it would be nice if you cleaned up in here every now and then, you know. Uh, I'm up to my eyes. I don't know, Lindsay, you can look at you with that fungus on your face. You look like that Robinson Crusoe one. Oh, yeah, I could use that. Huh. Oh. Well, I was marooned over in Bangkok, isolated. And you watch, this is the sort of thing Richard and Judy will go for, you know. No human interest, up against the odds. Punch and Judy, more like. Hey, look what I've got for you. <laughs> happy little kid, isn't he, eh? I'd be even happy if you had a little brother or sister, wouldn't you, babe? No, he loves being an only child, don't you, my son? Gets all the attention and all the best presents. Don't you worry, Josh, we'll get you a little brother. Has Lindsay gone to nursery with Carly? Yeah. But mm, Mike had noticed. Can't take his eyes off that minty typewriter, can he? He should be getting fed up, you know. Yeah, well... All that time he spends upstairs writing, it's like he's trying to avoid her. Mm, more like avoiding him, the state of that beard he's growing. No, seriously though, Bev. I think they could be having problems, you know. Do you reckon? Well, it's not like I've had the old glass up to the wall or nothing, but... Oh, are you, Mike? Oh, yeah, these are enough for you, Dad. Thanks. Um, so as I was saying, mm. you'll have to keep an eye on the shop for me later today. Who well, may have retired? Well, you'll have to come out and retire them, won't you? They're doing a new bed, you lying there demonstrating, I want to go and see you. Where? Some hotel in town. How long are you going to be? Oh, only a couple of hours. Thanks, love. Mm -hmm. What's this? You all right, Babs? Hey, Josh. You remember your Uncle Mike, don't you? Well, you won't believe this, but that's actually him behind all that fuzz there. You yeah, I'm very funny. You all right, Yes, yeah, i Hey, you're going to get your booster jabs tomorrow. <laughs> I'm harder in than me. Listen, um, you know this book you're writing? Yeah, yeah I'm going to get important bit, Dad. Yeah, but it's going to have to go or I'll lose it. I think he's lost it already, isn't he, eh? Come on. All right, how are you getting on? Oh, fine. Look, I'm completing this insurance claim form for the radio equipment. I'm going to need that crime reference number the police gave you. Yeah, well, I won't be here long. Look at that. Utter wanton vandalism. You know, the years I've had that radio equipment mapped, I've made contact with all manner of people from all over the world, from Waikiki to Watford. Well, you soon get it replaced. Actually, I've decided it might be time to move on. Move on into the uh, techno world. Perhaps join the internet. Well, you'd uh, need a computer for that. Well, we've got a computer, Max, as well in the restaurant. Yeah, but it's not connected to the internet. Ah, <laughs> simple piece of equipment could solve that. I believe it's called a modem. Uh, look, David, I really do need to have a word with you about Patricia. I need to know how flexible she's prepared to be. <sighs> Max, really, I do think you'd be far better off discussing this sort of thing with her directly. Yeah, but she doesn't want to discuss a great deal with me. She only wants me to agree to everything. Yeah, as <clears throat> promised. Oh, thank you, Julia. You're still on the table, Dave. Oh, thank you, Julia. Oh, I think we need a good job of that. 
I must admit, I had you down with the pen push or type. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't take much effort. Uh, anybody with a degree of intelligence could do it. I suppose you're a bit past all this handyman stuff, eh, hey, Dave? Good Lord, no. Oh, so you reckon you could do a tidy job like Max here has? <laughs> of course I could. Oh, well, in that case, perhaps you could come over to mine and have a look at my drains. It's just a Peter feeling going off to live with his sister. I need a mind's touch. Uh, well, actually, Julia, I, uh, I'll get that. Stay by the bed, eh? Excuse me a moment. Is it really all over between him and Jean? I'm not sure, Julia. Lovely man. Oh, I bet he's a Leo. Mum say if she finds you in my new bedroom. Georgia, don't. What are we going to do about Dad? What do you mean? One of us has got to say something to him. My mum and Dad are always in the hospital. We can't say anything to him there. But you know they can't go mad if they can think he saw us together. What are you two whispering about? Come on, Mum, we're just talking. Yes, I realise that, but what about? We were, well... I was just suggesting I could go and pick Dan up from the hospital. I don't want you picking Dan up. I'll pick him up myself, thanks very much. OK, it was just a suggestion. And when he does come home, I don't want him upset. He's been through enough trauma. So just keep things cheerful, OK? OK. Nat? Yeah, sure. In fact, I think it might be better if you both just keep out of his way for a while. Mum, don't you think it's time you just laid off a bit? What, swept everything under the carpet, you mean? How convenient. It's your father's idea you should both be allowed to stay here. I can't stand to see the sight of you in the same room together. In fact, you can come with me to the hospital, Nat. What? Well, you don't think I'm going to leave you two here alone together, do you? Mum, this is getting ridiculous. I'm working. This has got to be in for tomorrow. Right, well, you can come with me. Mum? Look, you're coming with me if I have to drag you there, all right? Bev? Bev, there's no need to order this many dates, love. People don't even like the things. No, they don't, but they buy them anyway, don't they? It's tradition. This small amount can make a start on the Halloween this way. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you won't be too long, will you? I've got to take our Josh to the doctor's after. What for? Oh, you know, just his jobs, diphtheria and that. Says who? Uh, we got the appointment of the health visitor this morning. Preschool health check and vaccinations. Yeah, but we don't want our Josh going anywhere near a health visitor for injections. OK, fine. We'll ask the doctor to do it then. That's the Pope for all I care, but he's not getting them done. Why not? Oh, Ron. These inoculations and vaccinations, well, they have side effects, don't they? I read about it in a magazine. Josh could get brain damage, and I'm not taking that chance. Anyway, I'm going to have to go. You can ring the health centre, tell them yes to the checkup, but a definite no to the injections. Ta-ra! Oh, why do you want me to rent a wedding dress? I can afford a newie. Because it's such a waste of money, isn't it? I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pounds for something you're only going to wear for a few hours. Well, a few minutes if I had my way. <laughs> Better get straight to the underwear page then, Mike. <laughs> Oh, I really want my own dress. <sighs> hey, what do you think of um, this one? Yeah, it looks nice, that, yeah. Yeah, some woman up there wants to know about cookers or something. Oh, right, yeah, see you in a minute. Thanks, Jimmy. Hi, love. How are things? <sighs> OK. Just wrecked. Oh, you haven't been taking anything, have you? No, no, I'm sticking to my methadone. I'll make it. I've got my ma on my back. Mums are supposed to be on your back. Yeah, but the problem is, Val, I don't think she wants to be around. Oh, she's just scared, love. I mean, she's been there before, hasn't she? And if you're straight with her, she'll hang on in there for you. Yeah, but see, the thing is, I screwed up, haven't I, with my mum and my dad? Your dad? Yeah, them fellas in France. I owe them a lot of dough. My dad saved my life when he came up with that granddad. I kept him happy for a bit. But I had done one, didn't I? I came home with my mum and dad. Well, are you all right now? They're going to find you here, are they? That's what I thought till yesterday. And you see every turn up, don't you? On behalf of the colleagues from Marseille. Do you want another two grand out of me? How are you going to find that? Well, don't tell me mum, will you? But my dad, I'm going to try and get a loan. Two grand, and he's not going to tell your mum? Well, my ma's on my case, isn't she? I know he ought to leave, but if I get seen out, right, they could lift me any time. Well, you're going to have to stay local then, aren't you? What well, if my ma gets wound up and froze me out? I've had it, haven't I? Oh, and you want me to have a word? Would you, Val? OK. But you better behave like an angel. <sighs> David, uh, look, you, um... I know you want to remain loyal to Patricia, right? Well, 
Yes, of course. She was my daughter. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. So, I just wish you could see things from my perspective. I mean, my access to the children has been reduced to just holidays. No say in the way they're brought up or their education. Do you think that's fair? I'm afraid fairness doesn't come into it, Max. Yet alone what I think. So, do you think it's fair if uh, Jean took Patricia away to France at the age of eight? Well, I... Max, my opinion isn't important as a cop out, David, and you know it. That feels lovely. Just this to do now. Uh, right, I'll just go and post this. I'll see you later, Dave. Make sure you get well wrapped up and get a bit chilly out there. <sighs> Julia, I'm going to the post box, not the North Pole. State of him, Slatty Oliver. I suppose you think I'm prying, but can I ask you, how did Patricia get on with the tests? I don't know, Julia. I thought she'd had them. Well, yes, she did, but she hasn't sent the results through. Ah, no wonder you're on tender oaks, love. Well, you know what they say. No news is bad news. Yeah, love, I'll tell her the minute I see him. Yeah, all right, tell her. Oh. All right, Dad. Oh, hello. Where were you meant to be an hour ago? Um, I don't know where. Kylie's little sing-song down the nursery for the parents. Oh, oh that went straight on me head. Bare brain Michael, you can let your girlfriend down, but not kids. What are you after, anyway? Um, Tripex. Don't tell me. Let me guess. For the book. Spot on. I, uh... I don't suppose you want a couple of razor blades while you're at it, do you? Um, no, no, no. Lindsay likes this. How does she? And how does she feel about you getting on with this book when you should be getting out and about? Oh, she's all right. Michael, look, son, I mean, I'm delighted for you that you're settling back in after all this Bangkok lark, but, well, that is exactly the next phase of me book. You know, settling back into normal life, how people coped and that. Yeah, but all this going back into the past, writing it down, are you sure it's good for you? Yeah, of course it is. It's like getting rid of ghosts, you know, writing about them. It helps me, Dad. Yeah, but how long are you going to be on it, son? I mean, you've got Kylie and Lindsay to think of now, haven't you? And you've already messed up today. Dad, will you get off me back? This is something I've got to do, no matter how long it takes. Here you go. A delicious, nourishing dinner for you. Oh. Who's this to? Um, Mandy. Oh, sorry. No, I just thought I should let her know, since I'm getting hitched. Just to give her one last chance, eh? Oh, don't be soft. I'm all yours, don't worry. Women! What's up now? Oh, don't ask. Jackie, just been to ask her if she wants me to do a couple of messages for her and she chewed me head off. Oh, come to slag off my sister, have you? No, no. They send, uh, they a bit of a favour, mate. You are kidding, aren't you? No, look, I know, I know I can't do the nap, but... Well, you're one of my best mates. I never meant to. Save it, Jimmy. I don't think my heartstrings can take it. Send hear me out. It's about our little Jimmy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, I was just... Well, I was just wondering if you'd reconsider, you know, letting them have a go with the window round. Jimmy, you've used up all your favours with me. You owe me 1,200 quid, remember? I know. Please, mates. Come on, he needs a bit of a routine. Jimmy's right, Sin. He doesn't need to get himself sorted. Jimmy, you conned me big style. And you remember what happened when you took over the land, don't you? Yeah. I was wrongly accused of being a tea leaf. Yeah, and mud sticks. And they'll think the same about your lad as well. They won't. Look, come on, Sim, please. I know we owe you, and we want to pay it back, but... I'm worried about our Jimmy coming off the rails, and... Well, if he had something to do, it'd be all right, especially with you keeping an eye on things. Come on, give it a try. I'll stand by little Jimmy. Give him a chance, eh? He won't let you down, I know he won't. Just for me. Home sweet home. It looks different. 
That's because Mum's tidied it. She's tidied your room, too. Oh, you've not done any more computer mags out, have you? No, they're all still there, but in neat piles. Now, come on, sit down. Oh, Mum, stop fussing. I'm OK. <laughs> oh, how are you feeling? All right. The doctor says just to rest for a couple of days, and if he's all right, you can go out by the weekend. Is there anything I can get you? Um, lemonade? And, uh, have we got any ice cream? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, who's sleeping down here, then? Um, well, Georgia is, because, uh, Nat's in her room. We thought it'd be better if you had a room to yourself for the time being. Excuse me. Hi, it's your son. Down the hatch. So, uh... Nice one. Right, sit down. Got something to tell you. What, you got the money for them guys? Uh, no. No? <laughs> what are we gonna do now? What if they come looking for me? Hang on, Jimmy. We'll get the money from somewhere. Like where, Dad? Where? Trust me, will ya? Eh? Oh, hi, love. Good news. I have got our son a job. A what? A job. Remember? You graft and someone sticks money in your hand. Who on earth's gonna give me a job? Send back. Hang on a minute. I thought I said he wasn't to have that job. Oh, I'm sorry, love. This is what's best for the lad. Well, it's not what's best for me, Jimmy. No, me. You lose your mind, eh? You talk Sinbad into giving him a ladder where he can get into people's houses. Oh. I mean, it's like giving a, a set of keys to a car thief and asking him not to break in. Jackie, the lad needs to be occupied. Well, this is a big mistake, Jimmy. I have given Sinbad my word. If our Jimmy robs anything, I'll kill him myself. I hope you know what you're doing. Listen, Dad, I, I made up about you getting me a job and all that, but I'm not going to earn two grand cleaning windows, am I? Yeah, well, look, Jimmy, I've been thinking about that. We'll have a meet with these fellas. See if we can't pay it off in instalments. Ah, it's not a Freeman's catalogue, Dad. They want it all in one lump sum, and soon they're not going to wait. Look, if they want the money, they're going to have to be patient, aren't they, eh? They'll have to be. Listen, Jimmy, this is Liverpool, not Marseille. My patch. We tell them what to do. You're not to bust that round, honey. Thanks, George. I don't know how you can eat that stuff. He likes it. It's a wind-up. He just fancies being waited on hand and foot. He asked for the most difficult thing he could come up with. Don't be so mean. Listen, you don't have to argue over me. Why not, darling? What's this? Oh, I thought you wouldn't mind if he played in here for a bit. Now, he won't want trains once he sees this. Thanks, Dad. Oh, uh, it's a phone. It's all about outpatients for Danny. Oh, um, will you keep your eye on Danny for a moment? Why? Because I say so. Sim City 2000. Thanks, Dad. You stick to your CD-ROM, son. I'll take over British Rail. What's left of it? Oh, hello, young man. Oh, hello, Mr. Crosby. Just back, are you? How's the head? OK, thanks. Good. Don't mind if I intrude for a moment, do you? No, of course not. Actually, I'm after some information about the Internet, uh, how to get linked up and all that. Well, Dan's your man. Yeah, he's king of the surf. Oh, marvellous. Well, look, once you're ship-shape again, perhaps you'd be kind enough to give me a demonstration. Oh, I'll do one now, if you like. Um, actually, we're just about to eat, David. Would you mind if we left it to some other time? Oh, no, 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 of course not. I wouldn't want to inconvenience you. Anyway, you're fully recovered now, are you? Uh, yes. How about the old memory? Any clearer about what happened before the accident, what made you run out into the road like that? <sighs> no, it's still a bit vague, I'm afraid. Well, let me reassure you. I spent some time in Aden with the Army Medical Corps, and I dealt with a lot of head injuries. And I bet you anything you like, in a few weeks' time, you'll remember everything. Clear as a bell. <laughs> Hiya. Oh, hello, love. Hey, you want to try these? Bet your meals for one. Price? Very competitive. And they're aligned, that'll be a market leader in six months. Only if mugs like you believe everything some smarmy salesman tells you. Right, go down the nursery, pick our Josh up, take him for his jabs. And the good news is, my sweet, I've had a word with the health visitor, and she's going to come round and explain all about Josh's injections to you. I know all there is to know about injections. I read all about it in a magazine Pat Farnham lent me last year. Oh, did you? Well, I'm not interested in Lord Snooty's ex-wife, thank you very much. Look, our Josh has already missed his measles and mumps for some reason, and... He missed them because I didn't want him to have them. He never told me that. Well, I know you kick off, didn't I? 
Do you want to raise your blood pressure? Oh, my thoughtful. And when were you going to tell me, like, when he caught the measles? Ron, if he gets measles, it's natural. I'm not having his body pumped with chemicals. But the chemicals are there to help him, aren't they? They have side effects, though, don't they, love? Look, I know you don't understand. It was all in this magazine of Pat's. But these mags don't tell you about what happens if you get the disease, do they, Bev? I can remember TB in this country, you know. My Auntie Beryl spent months in Blazackley Hospital with it. Ron, love, this is the 90s, not the 50s. But TB is coming back, and what would your veggie mags do if our Josh got it, eh? Or measles, or mumps, or whatever? The alternative treatment. Oh, yeah, like what? Ginseng and wishful thinking. I suppose you know better than the doctors now, do you? Well, if it's the same doctors that gave us thalidomide, then yeah. Listen. I have not put our Josh's health at risk over some trendy, stupid alternative nonsense. Now, I'm taking him down for his jabs, and he's going to have everything that he needs. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. He's my son, not yours. What did you say? I'm his mother. He can't do anything unless I say so. Evening, Max. Everything all right at the restaurant? Yes, fine, thank you. Good. David, with regard to Patricia's position on a test or something. Oh, Max, please, can't we drop this for heaven's sake? I mean, it's not going to help a bit, you know. Well, I've been at a loss trying to find out what will help, so I've decided to play Patricia at her own game. I don't think obstinacy is going to help either. All I want is answers, which I deserve. And seeing as I'm not getting any, Patricia may as well know that I'm not signing any forms until I know exactly what the state of her health is. Max, listen, you know perfectly well what Patricia's wishes are in the event of, well, of anything happening to her. Whatever happens, Thomas and Alice will be here with me. Not with Eric or with anyone else in France. And I certainly don't intend giving away her share of the house and the restaurant either. And if she doesn't like it, then we'll leave it to the courts for them to decide. And as she finds it so very difficult to talk to me at the moment, I suggest that you give her a ring. Tell her she's going to have to come up with an arrangement which will suit both of us. Hiya. Are these for me? Yeah. I've had so much attention. I should have accidents more often. Hiya. Hiya, you've got sweets as well? No. I can get you some if you want them. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. I've got these for now. Where's Mum and Dad? Watching the news. So, uh, do you believe what Mr Crosby said about memory? I can't remember. What did he say? So, um, you can't remember what happened the day you were run over? I just stepped in front of the car and it was stupid. I don't remember why you did it. Oh, yeah. What? Well, you do remember. Well, what exactly? Well, I came home, started to walk upstairs, and then... Then what? George. Well, I went to that scene, and I saw you two together, in bed. God. Dad, um, we're really sorry. Dad, get off that computer now. You've been on there too long. Hey, Dad. Dan. Tell Mum and Dad. Why should I tell? It's nothing to do with me. Well, look, um, whatever happens, you can't say anything. Ever. This is so stupid. If Mum and Dad ever found out that I knew about this, if we did take me back to the hospital, be seeing child psychologists and stuff like that. No way, I'm keeping my mouth shut. Do you think he will keep his mouth shut? You heard what he said? It sounded pretty convincing to me. And that means we didn't have to tell Mum and Dad anything. All this grief we've caused for nothing. A new home, a new start for three people in the process of moving. Join John Peel for the last in his current series on 4 Next.
got the first rule of window valet with clean water. Look, smears, smears, smears. Sim? Yeah? Let me know for you from Bristol. Hang on, mate. Clean water. Heil Hitler. Hey, behave. Eh, there's a drain at the back. You must be mad. Sim, that's been a good mate to you. So? You don't do this to him. Jackie, the lad needs a job. But not this job. Not working for a moose. Not cleaning our neighbours' windows. What if he nicks something, Jimmy? There's a temptation as every window. Oh. No, don't make that face at me, Jimmy. Just get him another job, anything. Good on the school governor born for you. Is that from Andy? Yeah, I wrote to tell her about me and Val. All right. Oh, it's a congratulations card. Well, she's taking it all right, then. Yeah, she seems to. Oh, yeah, you read it. I miss him. Go on, upstairs. You may as well get dressed now and then come down and have your toast. And don't get your scar wet in the shower. <laughs> he wants toast. He says he's got a headache, he's eaten three bowls of cereal, now he wants toast. I think it's the school thing, I think he's scared of going back. I'd better get off. Where? Work. Well, I think I ought to. If that's all right. Yeah. Yes, of course. Good idea. It'll get her over the house. You all behave as if nothing's happened. You and her, you're exactly the same, aren't you? Any unpleasantness, just shove it under the carpet. Life goes on. Yes, well, it does, doesn't it? So we just carry on, do we? Nothing too serious, just a slight spot of incest in the family. We'll get over it. Look, these are my children, Ollie. How can we ever get over this? So when do we get our lives back? Or do we just stay stuck in that moment when they told us? So we just stay, do we? Going round and round in circles for the rest of our lives. I don't know. There's no convenient little guide, no, no little handbook to tell us how to behave when your children are sleeping together. I'll check it out in Whitaker's. Oh, don't joke about this, Ollie. Well, what can I do? So, I can't make jokes. Well, can I laugh? Can I watch television? Can I eat? Can I actually enjoy a meal without feeling that I'm a trivial and shallow person? We have to move on, Belle. Where to? Why do we move to? <sighs> a small note at the bottom of the page. The clocks go back on Saturday. Oh, if only... If only we could put them right back. Right, so it's 1986. She's 13, he's 11. It hasn't happened. What do we do? What do we do differently? I don't know. Everything. What is it? Cat, isn't it? Pussycat. Polio. T is Small for pussycat. TB. Yeah, what's this? Scurvy. Berry berry. And leprosy. Bev, I don't think you realise the progress we've made, you know. I mean, vaccinations, antibiotics, it's done miracles, medical science. It's eradicated all those infectious diseases. It hasn't. Yes, it has. Ron, it hasn't. All these diseases, they're coming back, aren't they? Drug-resistant strains. So your medical science is not much cop at all. All right, fine. So we take him to an aromatherapist, do we, eh? Let him sniff five drops of that lama lama ding dong Lang, lang. Yeah, wasn't that a hit for the bass as he rolls? And then suddenly, hey, presto, he's a bug-free zone. You're just being stupid now. Sin, Pardon? have you had your roofie vaccinated yet? Yeah, yeah. And what's she had? Um, everything. Thank you. See? Proves nothing. Sin must be off his head. He's got the spawn of the devil out there cleaning windows with him. Proves absolutely nothing. Yeah, well, it proves we'll be keeping our windows shut. No, I mean, Sinbad. I mean, it's your generation, isn't he? You small at all that do what the doctors tell you to, propaganda. Look, Bev, I don't want to argue with you, love, but he's going to have his jab. Ron, he's not. Look, I know you're worried, so come here, mate. But I'm going to take preventative measures of my own. He's going to a measles party, aren't you, eh? Hey? A what?
What are you doing? I'm just looking at... I'm looking for clues. Clues? Was it Mel? Mel, can we please stop rooting through the past? Everything's gone wrong. My work. My chances of ever making a career. My children. My whole life. Everything's gone wrong. Not everything. I sat down. Oh, for goodness sake, Ron, will you just leave it out? It's little Kelly from the nursery, right? She's infectious, so anyone who wants the kid to catch measles... Uh, no, my love, I don't think you're listening to me. I don't want Josh to catch the measles. Yes, you do. No, I don't. That's why I want him vaccinated. Ron, this is a natural vaccination. This is welcome to the loony bin. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm standing right here. Well, right upstairs. There's no room upstairs. Anyway, it's tomorrow the measles party, so you'll have to take him. I'm not taking him. Oh, Ron, you just drive me so mad. You're so set in your ways. Me? I'm set in my ways. Can you not just open your mind, just to crack, and let in one teensy-weensy new idea? There's no chance of that. It's been solidified, love. Shut up, you. Hey, yeah. What happens if I catch it? Well, you've already had it. Yeah, but what happens if I get it again? Oh! That's the point. You can't get it again. That's why you're taking Josh. I've told you I'm not taking him anywhere. I've put my foot down now, Bev. He's having it done properly under medical supervision. Well, actually, Ron, I don't really think it's up to you. What do you mean, not up to me? I'm his dad, aren't I? Well, no, actually, you're not. Mike's his father. Or had you forgotten? What do you think, Mike? Um, no, leave me out of this, eh? Why? No, go on, tell us what you think. Because apart from me, there's only one other person in this room who's got any kind of rights over our Josh. Yeah, look, I'm OK, sin, honest. You can get back to your shop. Come on, it's on my own here. You sure? Positive, lad. Well, look, um, if you do have any problems, you know where I am, OK? Hey, right, Oh, thank heavens. A window cleaner. I was beginning to give up hope. <laughs> Je veux uh, parler avec... No, 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 no. Je suis telephoning d'Angleterre. For heaven's sake! Je vous demande pardon. Monsieur est tout à fait fou. Hey, what are you doing? Will you stop playing into Patricia's hands? What were you saying? This is exactly what she wants. She wants you a guilty wreck. That was something. Will you just use your head for five minutes? Where's David? Where's Patricia's doting papa? Where? In the bathroom, singing selected highlights from Oklahoma. And where's he going this afternoon? On a coach trip to Chester with the over 55s. Is that a man whose daughter's dying of cancer? Oh. I think not. Max, if Patricia had a suspected ingrowing toenail, David, you'd be on the first flight over there to hold her hand. Darling, we're talking about someone who's just had tests of secondary cancer. And I'm talking about a woman who's decided to take you to the cleaners. And who can blame her? I'd be backing her all the way if it wasn't you she got her teeth into. No! You've got her all wrong. She's not like that. No? Then why is she refusing to tell you the biopsy results? Hmm? To frighten you, Rigid. To soften you up so that you're sweating buckets by the time the solicitor's letter arrives. Max, has it ever occurred to you that she might be trying to teach you a lesson? Hmm? Oh, yeah, cheers, love. Mm. Yeah. But having your cake and eating it, facing up to responsibilities, growing up, that sort of thing? That'll be fine. <laughs> no, you don't. Any calls from France, I'll take them. All right, mate, uh, number two, please. Hey, Ron. How are you, Jack? <laughs> you working, then? Well, not officially, no. <laughs> No, I just needed to get out of the house, you know, and I couldn't think where else to go. Yeah, me too. Tell me, just felt like I had to jump in the Moby and go for a drive, you know. <laughs> I don't suppose you fancy a spend here. Two-faced little toe bag, what are you? I get you the job, I get you set up, and what you do, you let me down? Hey, look, listen, what have you robbed this for, hey? Hey? Look, look, I thought we could sell it. Sell it? What for? Hey, to pay for your next hit! No, to pay you in sin, bad back, honest. Your mother said this would happen. No way, I said. No way. Trust him. Look, don't tell me more about this, please. Oh, don't worry. 
Hey, Sunshine, I'm not going to. Because you haven't robbed that. Because we are going to take it straight back from where you nicked it. Hang on, hang on, look. We'll get 20 quid for that, you know. You don't pay your debts by robbing. You do this straight. We haven't got time to do it straight. Oh, man. We really should have thought of that. Well, we're just going to have to talk to them, aren't we? We're going to have to get an extension. No use, Daddy. No use. If I don't pay them right, they'll kill me. Right? First warning, they'll blow my legs off. And if I don't cough up the full two grand, then they'll... We'll get the money. How? I don't know. We'll get it. Well, listen, I'm thinking there, right? Why don't you have a word with some of your old suppliers? What? Are you seriously suggesting I do a spot of demon to get you off the hook? Just a thought. Just a thought? Well, don't think. This house nearly got blown to bits not that long ago. Pump, action, shotgun, your mother could have got killed. Or Kylie, or all Lindsay. I am not dealing again, not even for you, son. I'm going to fix you something down south with your Uncle Billy. You'll be safer down there. Anything. I'll do anything I have to to get that money fast. But I am not dealing again. So don't you ever ask me that. Do you hear me? <laughs> Governors. I don't think that sounds right, actually. Sounds a bit formal to me. Well, they are formal, these means, aren't they? Anyway, Mr. Chairman, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to draw the meeting's attention to the serious and largely overlooked problem of bullying. I've compiled a list of specific incidences. Tell you what, I know what I'd do if someone was bullying Ruth, I'd kill them. I mean, no matter how many kids me and Val might have, Ruth's always going to be number one. You're planning a big family, are you? I don't know, we haven't discussed it. I mean, I'd like to, but, well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, no one's going to take Ruth's place, but what if we split up? Hang on, you've not even walked up the aisle yet. Yeah, but look at the statistics, Mick. One in three managers end in divorce. You're a rare sunshine, you, aren't you? I was telling Fee about the toss and the coin. She said, what basis is that to start a marriage? Pass. Mind you, blind panic on reaching a big 4 -0. That's no basis for a marriage either, is it? Um, hello, I'm looking for a, a second-hand, uh, Bible book. Hello, um... Nick Johnson, school governor. Hey, you're famous. You just missed his anti-bullying speech. What, for the governors? Don't go wasting good speeches on that lot. Bunch of self-satisfied white middle-class bores. They don't want to hear they've got a bullying problem. That's worth a try, isn't it? Mm, yeah, if you're particularly fond of banging your head against brick walls. Well, it's not that bad. And bullying's not the only thing they don't want to know about. Do you know, 10% black kids they got in that school now. And is there anything on the curriculum about black history, black achievements, black culture? No, I don't think so. Because black people don't have any, do they? My husband was only saying last night, like, how's our Tanya ever going to have any sense of self-worth if her own school can't even teach her about her heritage? They think they just swung from the trees. Hey, well, look, I'm one of the governors now. You? No, thanks. You've just joined the establishment. Hang on. You're saying I'm a coconut? You don't even know? Yeah, well, it's up to you to prove me wrong then, isn't it? Uh, hang on, love. I thought you wanted to do... Yeah? Well, you've just cost me a sale. No, I just cost me a sale. Uh-huh. Thought the air was crackling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what's all this about a coconut? Brown on the outside, white in the middle. I'm not taking that from anybody. I'm gonna sort the bullying out and all this curriculum stuff she's going on about. I'll show her who's a coconut. You've lost that loving feeling. The righteous brother. <laughs> Let the heartaches begin. Long John Baldry. Very good. Ten out of ten. Bev wouldn't have had a clue, you know. Long John who, she says. It's all like a history lesson for her. You know the other one that said, hey, should we go down the Empire and see the Dillon concert? You know what she said? Bob Dillon. He's ancient. Bob Dillon's ancient. He's in his fifties. I'll be fifty next year. Make it easy on yourself. The Walker Brothers. Great song. I had Scott Walker's signed photo pinned in my desk lid at school, all smudged, but I cried over it. <laughs> I don't know, it's like talking a foreign language sometimes, isn't it, eh? All those memories, like Dick's and the Doc Green, two-way family favourites. And yeah, here's one. Viral. Do you remember Viral? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be all double Dutch to her. So we talk about garage and Britpop and rave and... Stuff like that. 
Now, of course, it's the vaccination mark. Like I'm some kind of boring old fossil just because I want our Josh vaccinated. You stick to your guns, love. Never did us any harm. It's not up to me, though, is it, Jack? As she so very kindly pointed out. The thing is, I've always been Josh's dad. Always. It was never an issue. Now suddenly... And she says it in front of our mic. And it's the truth, isn't it? I haven't got any rights. Josh isn't my son. I had to bring him back, Max. It's his first day. He hasn't got a clue what he's doing. Look at that soft lad. Well, he looks all right, doesn't he? It is. And look at it. It's a mess. Hey, what were you putting your big, fat feet? Sorry. You? Look at that. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Ah. That's dangerous, that, you know, Maxie. Leaving valuables lying round in the garden. Mm. I mean, anyone could have nicked it. Good job we found it, eh, Jimmy? Definitely. Mm. No, seriously, Max, you know where. You want to be careful. Max! Where are you? Oh, duty calls, eh? <laughs> Come on, son. Nope. Oh. Bucket. Oh. Max! Oh, there you are. Where have you been? Looking for the radio. Now, look. I need every single bit of paper that's even remotely connected with your finances. Bank statements, mortgage details, insurance policies, uh, will, pensions. Oh, oh. Because I'm going to make absolutely sure that when the second Mrs. Farnham starts playing rough, we've got enough ammunition to blow her into kingdom come. So, Max, you can stop worrying because you're not going to lose the house or the restaurant. One round with me and little Miss Po-Faced Patsy's going to wish you never started this. You're not still. Look at me. This is before when I was still innocent. And this is after. What's the difference between then and then what happened, eh? Look, just leave it, Belle. But look how perfect they look, how ordinary. They were ordinary. Except for the fact that by the time these were taken, they were sleeping together. I'll, I'll put these away, shall I? Something must have happened, because this just doesn't happen. Not an ordinary family. It just doesn't happen. Unless... Unless one of them was already damaged. Oh, come off it, Belle. You're saying... One of them already knew too much. You're saying that one of them was sexually abused? Maybe. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. If somebody was... I mean, if somebody... Are you accusing me? I don't know. Should I? You think that I... Yes, all right, yes, why not? Men and daughters, little girls, all those bedtime You're stories, accusing me of abusing my own daughter. What daughter. Oh, that's... That's it. <laughs> that is finally... Ollie. Ollie. Ollie, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 
I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I think you need to see a doctor. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know. I think the world of Bev, you know, and I love her to death, but... Yeah, I know you do. Here they go again, eh? Talking about myself. What about you? Me? Oh, please, don't let's talk about me. I might throw myself off the next cliff. Yo, Jimmy. Leave him, Jack. It's easy. You've done it once. You can do it again. Yeah, but the bloke I left then... This is a different Jimmy. No drugs, no thieving. He's trying dead hard on you. For me. So I could walk out on him. Well, I couldn't. I mean, I just couldn't do it to him. You fall apart. Now little Jimmy's back. It's like... It's this drugs thing. It's like a disease. I'm, I'm scared the whole thing's going to blow up in our faces, you know. Jimmy's going to start dealing again and... Just tired, Ron. I know you all over now. All I can see is years and years of it stretching ahead, you know. The rest of my life spent struggling trying to keep the two of them out of trouble. But I couldn't leave them. Who else is going to take care of them? Yeah, well, that's his lookout, Jackie. You've got to start looking out for yourself. Yeah. Well, maybe any relationship's better than no relationship at all. I mean, do you know? I think I'm scared of growing old on my own. What? Beautiful woman like you? I'm joking, aren't you? They'd be queuing up. If I'm one wrong. Men my age, I mean, they're only interested in young girls. Well, look at you. <laughs> Case in point. He's going to give me a second look, eh? <laughs> hey. Don't you be putting yourself down, Jackie. I'll tell you what, you line five 18-year-olds up right there. No, I'll tell you what, make that ten 18-year-olds. I bet one of them couldn't hold the candle to you. I mean it, Jackie, love. You get better looking every year. I mean, look at you. You're lovely, you're bright, you're good company. You're warm, you make me laugh, you speak my kind of language. You... Maybe we should go in. Next here on 4, beginning with Caroline in the City.